Ruff in the present series of TV Burp. Dirty boy trouser aerial on American Inventor. Fortunately for Khalid, his invention is <laughs> Dirty boy! Squirrel with dandruff on doctors. <laughs> And thirsty Tony and Benjamin disappointed on the bill. Would you like to sit down? I won't offer you a cup of tea if you don't mind. You said there'd be a cup of tea. I thought it would be. It was Michael Aspel's last Antiques Roadshow. Yeah, he's retired from the show, but not from show business, although Hugh Scully gave it up and sang without a trace. <laughs> What I always loved about the Antiques Roadshow was the heartwarming family stories behind the antiques. This is a nice photograph. Is this elegant lady a member of your family? No, she killed my mother's dog. <laughs> I'm sure she had her reasons. Sunday's show was turned into a wonderful farewell to Michael, complete with some fascinating Michael facts. Michael has clocked up more than 50,000 roadshow miles. He's met close to 40,000 people and signed almost as many autographs. <laughs> 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 yeah, that's just the start of it. It, it does go on. <laughs> Over the course of making Antiques Roadshow, Michael has got drunk in over <laughs> 200 different travel lodges. And for a month lived solely on Ginster's pork pies. <laughs> Michael likes to steal the antiques worth the most money and has 99% positive feedback on eBay. <laughs> sure, all right, we don't need any more of that, I don't think. Here, yeah. yeah. I wonder what Sir Alan Sugar's up to. Hello, girls. How's my pants doing? <laughs> yes, it's week two of The Apprentice. <laughs> Touch my fence again, I'll give you a wedgie. <laughs> I am surrounded sugar, and one of you will be fired. <laughs> Thanks, <Andy. laughs> yes, it's only week two, and Sir Alan was particularly fussy about his laundry. I've laid on two laundries for you. You go out, you find the customers, you perform the service, and most certainly make sure the quality is right. Because I'll tell you one thing. When stuff comes back from the laundry that I don't like, I sling it back at them. <laughs> oh. All right. All right, Sir Alan, sorry. Yeah. Might need a bit of vanish on those. Uh. <laughs> yeah, because Sir Alan doesn't go for the designer gear. No, he goes for the cheap copies from the markets. He doesn't wear Calvin Klein pants. No, he has a cheaper sound alike. I'm going to phone the 24-hour hotline to see the progress on my Calvin Klein. Yeah, Kelvin Kleins. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's why he's so rich. He saves money by buying hooky gear. <laughs> yeah, I've got his pants here, look, there they are, look. Kelvin Klein. <laughs> then he's got his uh, fake Nike trainers, there they are. Uh, he bought his wife some um, Christine Dior perfume. <laughs> <laughs> And then he's got his, uh, his fake Louis Vuitton bag. They're uh, Louis Sweetcorn. Louis, <laughs> Louis Sweetcorn. I don't know, it wasn't a real thing. <laughs> now, the girls, led by Jenny, were off knocking on doors trying to drum up some trade. And I was surprised to hear Lady Thatcher wasn't interested in helping these young entrepreneurs. Good morning. Hello. Anna. Good afternoon. We've just set up a new company and we're looking to do washing and ironing for people so they don't have to bother on a weekend. Not interested. All right, no. thank you. Yeah, that's not fair, actually, because I do all Lady Thatcher's laundry. Ooh. All right, sorry, Maggie. Well, there's her pants, look. <laughs> David Cameron. <laughs> David Cameron on the front and Brown on the back. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Didn't mean to say that. But in that way, didn't mean it in that way. Hmm? Team leader Jenny wasn't impressed with Shazia and Lucinda. She felt she had to spoon feed a couple of them. That is the right expression, isn't it? Spoon feeding. For the entire process that I've been working with both of you, it has felt like I've had to breastfeed you. Yeah, I... <laughs> All that talk of breastfeeding. I fancy a rusk now. 
Uh, well, I must say, I have been enjoying the new series of daytime DIY show 60 Minute Makeover. If you're unfamiliar with the format, it's a surprise makeover like changing rooms, but, and here's what singles it out, it all takes place in 60 minutes. Although, if you take out the adverts, the show is in fact only 46 minutes long. <laughs> so, you can imagine, 46 minutes, it's got to be a fairly shoddy job. <laughs> This week on 46 Minute Makeover, <laughs> Victoria did it on her mum, Margaret. And what was her motivation? In On The Secret today is daughter Victoria. Why do you want to do this for your mum? Because I can't be bothered to do it myself. <laughs> <laughs> now, be fair, her mum has had health problems, a condition affecting her eyes. She's very, very busy. Um, she never has any time to do this makeover. Um, also, um, recently, well, a few months back, um, she was actually diagnosed with glaucoma, um, so her eyesight hasn't been great. Mm, well, that might come in handy a little later on. <laughs> <laughs> it is shoddy work. But, of course, when Mum Margaret got home from her trip to find the 46-minute makeover team outside her house, she was most excited. It made her voice go a little bit high. Well... Who set this up? <laughs> Quite high. Can't get any higher than that. Oh, wow, it's bright. Oh, it's not great. <laughs> Surely that's as high as it can go. <laughs> How <laughs> nice is this? <laughs> yeah, that might get annoying. <laughs> but with only 46 minutes to do the makeover, I'm just a bit worried about the standard of the work. I mean, what happens when they all go home? Which brings us to our TV Expert of the Week. TV Expert of the Week. Adam Crew will test a model building on an earthquake simulator. To make it realistic, this model is built with spaghetti. <laughs> Cory had developed a new invention, the arm kitchen roll dispenser. Cossie is girl, I know that. <laughs> <laughs> it is not your fault, it is the Thanks, Gail. <laughs> Good luck with it. <laughs> Deb's daughter Amber seems to be picking up some of her dad's traits. It starts with a rather squeaky mouth. I've been in plenty of pubs, me. I, I just. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Speak your mouth. And before you know it, you've got the full dev. <laughs> <laughs> but the big story, of course, was Paul and Leanne burning down Velandro's, the Italian restaurant. And it was important they got their story straight. What if I say she wasn't? And then they speak to her and she says she was? You don't have to say that she wasn't, just don't say she was. But if he says she was and she wasn't, and you say she was and she wasn't, and she was and she says she wasn't, and she wasn't and she says he was and she wasn't, then who was? I can't say she wasn't, and then they speak to her and she says she was. You don't have to say that she wasn't, just don't say she was. Well, I'd say she wasn't, and you say she was. You don't have to say that she wasn't, just don't say she was. I wasn't. <laughs> It wasn't just Paul and Leanne involved in the arson attack, no. I believe she got a little black furry monkey to help her out. You know, the, the little black furry monkey that hangs onto her back. I've got the full... <laughs> 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 he said she wasn't, but she was. He said she wasn't, he wasn't. He said she wasn't, he wasn't. He said she wasn't, he wasn't. He was. Not, he wasn't, he wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, Vernon was planning to change the Rover's return menu. Surely that puts Betty's hot pot at risk. We're not getting rid of Betty's hot pot. Is that what he's proposing? Mm. Is the jerk chicken named after you? <laughs> <laughs> hot pot compared to a shank. Yeah, I mean, I like... <laughs> I like Betty's hot pot. <laughs> but then I like the idea of Vernon's lamb shank. <laughs> but which is better? <laughs> There's only one way to find out.
TV Bird. Tommy Cooper hair on Johnny's New Kingdom. And this is all just like that. Just like that. <laughs> <laughs> Horse gets angry on owner's behalf on Heartbeat. You're a weakling. Deserve everything you get. <laughs> and a man falls in love with a silver car on the bill. <laughs> I wonder what Dean Gaffney's been up to since he appeared on TV Burp. Hello? <laughs> Hello? <laughs> Hello? <laughs> it's good to be back, good to be back. Hello? Hello? Yes, this was Ghost Hunting with I'm a Celebrity, which featured the stars, and I use the term lightly, <laughs> I'm a celebrity, get me out of here. And Dean was good value because he was so easily frightened. <laughs> I wouldn't mind, but he's filming himself screaming. <laughs> then it was time for the ghosts to talk to us. Please, Jack, if this is you, can you perhaps give us your initials? <laughs> that looks like a J. <laughs> yeah. Let's have a go with it, shall we? Yeah, let's see if any ghost can talk to us. Mm, oi, pulling over there, Mr. Ghost. Oi, let's pull over there. No, he's coming back, obviously. Oh, no way. And, uh, oh, and the ghost is going round. Oh, What's that, Mr. Goat? Oh, I'm just all right. Uh, oh, I'm back there. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, oh it's another, another J. <laughs> J, yeah. He's got J on the brain, that ghost. <laughs> Last week, we showed you R2-D2's dad on Emmerdale. All right. <laughs> well, this week on David Attenborough's Tiger Spy in the Jungle, I spotted R2-D2's grandma. <laughs> to see the whole family in work. <laughs> this was a hidden camera show for animals and turned up some amazing shots. With a tiger in their midst, monkeys have at least one way to show their disgust. Charming. <laughs> <laughs> There were some great shots of the tigers, particularly the dominant male, Charger. This is Charger, the father of the cubs. Worryingly, he got his name from his readiness to charge. Oh, I thought he was called Charger because you could use him to charge your mobile phone. <laughs> <laughs> On casualty this week, a patient was busy trying to recreate that old Phil Collins hit in the air tonight with a paper towel dispenser. Kelsey was upset because her date stood her up. What if he did turn up last night? Oh, he didn't. What if he saw me, took one look and thought, what a minger? Well, it's not entirely beyond the, <laughs> the bounds of possibility. But... <laughs> but I wonder what a child would be like if Bill Bailey mated with a Rice Krispie. Bit like that, I suppose. The Bill Bailey Rice Krispie hybrid. <laughs> well, as it's the last in this series, as a special treat to myself, let's find out what the Nutty Nosher is eating on this week's Freaky Eaters. The fear of fruit and veg is so extreme she can only eat one thing. Helen is addicted to pasta. Pasta! When pasta isn't available, Helen's alternatives of cheese, 